Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. Bit of a throwback for people that used to watch my channel um, a few years ago now. I went to the car bookstore this morning and I managed to pick up this bad boy. So this is an Alan Bradley CPU and SL503, which I looked at it and I thought, oh, this is an old Alan Bradley PLC. How old is it? And I thought maybe like 2010 or something. Turns out it's from like the 90s, so not exactly a good buy, but I paid 20 quid for it. So this is the power supply. CPU and then I've got an input, 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 input uh, module, so that's quite a lot of I.O. there, inputs. And I've got three output uh, cards, and then I've got two input modules as well. And then further down here, I've got some spare, uh, let's go over there, there, I've got some spare racking there, and then this plastic there is cracked. So what I did was, I thought, I won't do a video on this, I'll just, I bought it um, actually so I could list it. Um, on eBay, so I just I got I bought it for 20 quid and I thought all right I'll just chuck it on eBay probably sell it for a hundred 200 quid something like that and just kind of get rid because It's an old Alan Bradley PLC, you know, it's not, not something I'm ever gonna program I have looked into how do I program it and it's kind of a, no, a nonsense ball lake where um, There it's got an RJ45 port, but this is not Ethernet. This is um, DH485 so instead of RS485 it's DH Digital Highway 485, so you need some Digital Highway converter to USB. It's got RS-232, so I think you could program it via that as well. So this is the CPU module. This is essentially like the ET200 SP rack. Anyway, so what I did was, I thought, okay, let me just power it up. So this is the PLS, this is the CPU, the, the power slide, the PSU. Um, there's the, uh, like, writing layout for how to wire it, I guess. So 24 volt out, and then... Um, 230 volts in so that this was all plugged in slotted in like that and wired in and then I turned it on and it had this RS chunky um, 15 amp fuse so 15 amp 415 I actually thought it was a 3 amp fuse but I've I read it wrong T3 15 amp 415 volts so I've actually just put the wrong fuse in I put a 3 amp fuse so okay I'll, I'll take that but anyways I turned it on and then it went pop, and this fuse blew. And then I was like, what? So the lights lit up, the CPU program started, and then I'm guessing it must have fired an output or something that then shorted the power supply somehow. So maybe one of these, because again, this is from a car boot sale. So the guy I actually bought it from, he was an electrician um, at a panel building company, and I think they took this out of a rig. What's interesting is when you look at the date there, date installed, uh, October 2017, so that's not exactly, um, I mean, it's eight years ago. But for PLC, that's from the 1990s. Why would you have that installed 2017? I guess, unless maybe it was installed in the 90s or two, early 2000s and then died and then someone had to buy a new one and installed this one. So this one's been running for probably like six, seven, eight years and now they've ripped it out. So anyways, the fuse blew. So I need to put in a, an appropriate 15 amp fuse again. Um, so I've taken off the power supply and I thought maybe something downstream has killed it. So let me see if I can just power on this power supply and see if it works. And then power on just the CPU, see if that works, and then go from there. Um, I have noticed, so this is, everything's quite exposed in the 90s, kind of, you know, nothing's really SMD. So it's all kind of through hole. So you've got a little selector switch there. So what I want to do is I want to turn this on and see if it works. I need to obviously make sure I don't touch any of this board because all of this is probably 230 volts. Apart from maybe like, so it looks like you've got, Power, main power circuits here, and then I guess you've got 24 volt stuff going on here with the smaller uh, components there. But if you look there, that seems to be a little bit burnt out to me. Now that could be related to my issue of the fuse popping or not. It looks like when I look there, I've got a big chunky power resistor there. So I might stick my meter across there and see if I can replace that, I don't know. Um, it also seems to have somewhat of a fried transistor or something in there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much I want to delve into this to in order to get this I can I can get this whole uh, piece to be exposed uh, By taking off these four screws, which I might end up doing. I don't know for now Let me just replace this fuse because I put incorrectly put the a 3 amp fuse in there I'll put in a 13 amp fuse. I think it's supposed to be 15 Put in a 13 amp fuse there and then we'll try to turn it on and see what happens. So bear with me All right, so I put a 13 amp fuse in there again. It should have been 15 and the fuses I have are kind of a bit too small, so I'm kind of, I've kind of squeezed it in a bit there, but it's a bit too short. It's not as big as 
this one. Um, so I'm going to turn it on. I suspect it's just going to work because um, it powered on the CPU and I saw all the lights start to go on and then it blew the fuse. So um, I'm guessing an output is fired. So what I'll do is let's turn this on, see if it works. And then after that, I'll try and disconnect more things downstream and then just see if we can get a consistent voltage on the power supply and then on the CPU. And if I can get the CPU to stay on, that'll be a big win for me. So I can see the power supply is red at the moment. Um, yeah, let's just see if something pops. That was my knee that popped there. Oh, I can hear it going. Oh, something's going. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's not good. So I think I was a bit slow to react there. Now I do have, um, I'll just show you. I can't, can't really show you. I do have uh, a loft window right, like literally half a meter that way. So I've got that open. You can see it's pulling the smoke out. So my, thankfully my whole room and attic is not covered in smoke. And I also am prepared and do have a fly, fire blanket. So I'm not totally useless here. <laughs> But that is crazy. So it is definitely either I'm an idiot and I've wired that in wrong. I have unplugged the thing now. So that is unplugged. Um, either I'm an idiot and I've wired that wrong, which according to that schematic, I think I've wired correctly. Um, or obviously it was it was interesting, right? So something popped, probably a capacitor. Um, I'm not going to mess about with this anymore. I might maybe... I might just try to look at the board just to see exactly what popped. But I think what I might do is I might try to go online and see if I can get one of these power supplies that work. But yeah, I mean, it's literally still smoking. That is a hell of a lot of magic smoke, which, again, would just be a capacitor, I guess, that blew. So, yeah, I'm buying stuff from a car so Quite interesting, eh? I'm going to try and open it now, but I do find it quite funny that this has never happened to me with a Siemens power supply. Now, I've had a lot of Siemens power supplies in my time. And, um, for example, I've got this. These ones are incredible. And then I've also got, um, where's my older one? I don't know where it is. But I've got some old Siemens power supplies. And many of them have died. Like, I've had a lot of Siemens power supplies die. But I've never had one blow like that. And so, yeah. American safety standards, eh? You Americans. It's just funny that the first time I have a massive... Is that still smoking? Yeah, it's funny that the first time I have something blow up in my house, it's a bloody American product. I'm trying to... I've got one of these screws out. I'd like to have a... I'd like to have a look at what cap blew. I I think I I'm not skilled enough to be able to um to repair a uh, a pass by like power electronics. Oh, my glasses is coming. Power electronics is not my realm at all. Um, so yeah. All right, last screw coming out. So. I'm pretty scared of capacitors, so, I mean, I, I think, oh, I can actually see, look, that's a bit of it there. <laughs> um, from what I know, like, I've got a friend of mine at work, and he, um, he's from Pakistan, and he was saying that one time he picked up a capacitor on the floor, and it shocked him pretty bad, and it's quite interesting that capacitors can hold charge for a very long time, so... I'm always very skeptical of capacitors. So let's have a look at the board. I'm just not I'm just not gonna touch anything. And I've, like I said, obviously it's all un 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 unpowered now. There's not nothing connected to it. So nothing should blow, but I keep one of these next to me at all times. I've never even come close to needing it on any one of my videos, and I've done a hell of a lot of videos. And that was <laughs> that was the closest 
I've ever come to. All right, come on, let's get you out. It's still, it's still warm. All right, I got it out. <laughs> I mean, his brain, his brains are splattered <laughs> on there, which is funny. All right, cool. Let's have a look. So, I mean, which one popped? It looks, I guess that. Or that. I don't really know. One of these two popped. Um, you know, one one thing I've realised is, or one thing I'm thinking is, more than likely, because the original fuse popped. So this is the original fuse when I when I turned it on. So there's probably already a fault with the power supply, probably because it had been sitting in a car boot cell or something, and, you know, gotten wet or whatever, or hasn't been stored properly or whatever happened. And so this fuse, it says on it, T3, which I thought was a type of fuse, comma 15 amps. Now, is that T3 15 amps or is that T3.15 amps? Surely that's not T3.15 amps. I don't know why, but originally I read it as 3 amps and I put a 3 amp fuse in, as, as you saw in the beginning of the video, and then I replaced it with a 13 amp. And I feel like had it just been a 3 amp, it would have just popped again. And then I could have diagnosed what the fault was with the power supply that was causing it to pop, where there was a short circuit or whatever. So now, you know, that option <laughs> that's just not that's just not an option anymore. So I think I will just bin this. Um, I'm not about to start replacing some capacitors or whatnot and then bloody realizing that um, there's still a fault with it. So I'll go online now and see how much uh, this power supply is and then we'll see what we can do ah lovely jubblies eh lovely jubblies anyways all right uh yeah let me quickly check online all right so i'm giving up for now uh, i've had a little quick look on ebay and the cheapest one is 60 quid which i'm not going to do and i'm not going to repair this thing so um yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna repair this thing so I think what I'll try and do is I'll try and see, maybe, maybe, uh, what pins go on to 24 volts on here and then maybe just power it from my power supply and then just see if the inputs and outputs on the actual PLC work and then maybe just stick these on eBay and then just discard the power supply. I think that's what I'm going to do. Pretty fun, interesting video, I think. Um, I was very excited for this. I kind of wanted to program it. Um, but, I mean, car boot cells are not the place where you're going to find good PLC gear. I did find my PLC logo that I paid, like, 10 quid for or something like that, which was an amazing find. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Who cares? Um, I did also actually buy this sort of timer from the boot cell for a pound as well today. So, it wasn't all bad. Cool. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.